Ah, video. In random video. Yay. So anyway, somebody gave me this link to this philosophy tube guy. Eh. Anyway, and um, it's a video on antinatalism, something like it anyway. Is having children wrong? Um, duh. Uh, where can it be? <laughs> what possible circumstance could make it right? I mean, I'm going to play Frankenstein. Yes. Will it be a little axe murderer? Will it die? Will it, you know, will it be deluded? Will it be like the kid in the retarded image? You know, if you argue on the internet, you're retarded. Now, if you think you're winning at life, you're retarded. Uh, Donald Trump. And such. I mean, even with billions. <laughs> you know, they still can't play a decent game. They still poo in their pants. So, yeah. So, there's all kinds of shits coming your way, fellow. I mean, I'm just letting you know. So... Um, having a conversation about how wise it is when you haven't even played the game yet. You know, that's the irony of it all, right? You don't actually live the whole life and then make the decision, well, will I impose one of these on somebody else randomly? You know, where they don't get to have your good luck. They get to have regular new odds of everything happening. New tickets in the fuck you uh, lotteries. Yeah. When could that possibly make sense? Uh, never. To anybody rational. I mean, we're talking about philosophy. Philosophy is supposed to have something to do with doing reasoning and rationality. When could it ever be rational to unnecessarily pull idiot straws, <laughs> little short ones, and stick them in other people's pockets? When could that ever be a rational thing to do? Never. I'm sure it doesn't occur to this fellow. He doesn't look like the kind of fellow things occur to, in my opinion. It's, it's statistically likely that you either have young children already, or having children is something that you're thinking about. And here's a controversial idea. Um, he said, according to his demographics, well, that's a kind of a weird thing, I'm just going to say. Just because on the internet, on YouTube, your demographics are probably heavily male-weighted. And so you really think men sit around and say, oh, I just can't wait to be burdened with a bunch of slobbering, stinking babies. And I hope my wife gets good and fat. I don't think they do that. I really don't. Maybe you guys do. <laughs> I don't know. You are all kind of creepy, so maybe that's the kind of shit that does go on in your head. I just can't wait. I could wait. I could figure out from, you know, going way back, that the biggest liability of relationships with women is this whole idea that, whoa, what if she has a kid or something? I don't want to do that. Oh, hell no. Having children is wrong. You should not create people, and you yourself were wronged by being created. Uh, <clears throat> well, the wronged of you being created is one of those arguments where you really have to do some thinking. You know, because if you're just going to pretend that um, people aren't completely deluded by optimism bias, you have to kind of even know what optimism bias is, and that even the most pessimistic people can, are guilty of it. I mean, just, you know, give even the most cynical, anti-life monster, uh, you know, a boner. <laughs> he's going to want, he's going to want to play for five minutes. So yes, addicts will play silly games. Wow, that's a big... We can't even go there philosophically, right? But that's the truth of it. So, um, you were wronged in the sense that, uh, factually, there were huge risks taken. And then you're fortunate enough not to be one of the kids who died of cancer. So, yeah, you didn't die in St. Jude Hospital. So, you know, from your perspective, it, I wasn't wronged. But you were entered in the lottery. That was the lottery you were entered in. And being entered into a really crappy lottery without your consent is being wrong. Now, if you can't philosophically understand how that's called wrong, I don't think you're very philosophical in all truth. I don't think you know what philosophy is supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be describing the truth. And the truth is, it's wrong, wrong, Okay, to enter people without their consent in lotteries that might get them horribly tortured. 
Yeah, that's wrong. Discuss. First of all, though, it's important that we realize the question, were you wronged in being created, is not related to the question, are you glad to be alive? Ah, uh, well, I suppose they're not. I mean, you just ought to just say, are you glad to be alive? It's a silly question of no value because I can just say, you're a deluded fucktard. I mean, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't demonstrate anything with any kind of sequence of axioms and premises and then draw conclusions. It just has to do with some idiot saying something like, Oh, you damn right I am. Yeah, damn right you're an idiot. <laughs> you know. I hope you are glad to be alive, but it could... Well, hoping things really isn't very useful philosophically either. We can sort of prove that hope can't move even the mountains of flea do on a dog. It can't move mountains of bacteria ooze. It can't move. Just can't, I'm just. I could go through. You know, quantum mountains of photonic spasmodicity. It can't even move those mountains. Hope is really useless. It still, be the case that your parents wronged you by making you. People would be glad if they were mind-controlled or brainwashed, but that doesn't mean it's an okay thing to do. Se there you go. Okay, good. You got that one right. Bing, 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 bing. Second, we're talking here about whether it's good for you to have been created, and whether it's good for your possible children to be created. It's probably very good for all of us that you were created, because you're so lovely and special and such a light in the world. Uh, yes, exactly, yes. Very good. Oh, so far he's doing wonderfully, but I know it's all going to crash and burn. Um, but anyway, yes, it's all, it's really silly to talk from your winner's perspective about how great the game is, and not recognize that, yes, you have the gold medal, and all the other people have broken legs, and dislocated hips, and you know, alcoholism and uh, a sense of uh, uh, in insufficiency for the rest of their lives. Your defeated will go home and cry a lot, and that's not good. World, but that doesn't mean it was good for you. We're talking here only about the value to the person being created. Mm, I don't even know what that means, but I don't think that's what we're doing. We're talking about what is the actual cost or implications of the action. And the actual cost is a perpetuation of a biosphere and a whole mechanism and industry and capitalism and everything it takes to make your life uh, something you might say, I want to live. And that's it. So you have to account for all of it. You can't just say, well, let's just talk about this individual's life and say whether living is right or wrong. That would be retarded. You don't pick out one human being from the planet and put him over here and say, now, is living right or wrong? No, you don't do that. Philosopher David Benatar says that being created is a harm. It's a bad thing because of what he calls the asymmetry between pain and pleasure. The absence of pain is good. An empty room in which nobody is suffering? Well, that's a good thing. But the absence of pleasure is only bad if there is someone who exists who is missing out. Well, again, what he should say, or what you should say, is that it can't be bad. It's that simple. It can't possibly be turned into some sort of trauma or torment or a negative thing. It can only be the absence of a good which isn't the same, and that's the asymmetry. Bad is bad, always. Good is good, only conditionally. And that's the asymmetry, in my opinion. It's just that the two things don't have the same mechanism of creation. It is, in fact, the eradication of bad that is good, mostly. Mostly. And I mean by mostly, fucking entirely. An empty room in which nobody is experiencing pleasure, well, who cares? Missing out... Well, yes, uh, like Mars. The absent Martians, let's just start, this is my way of metaphoring, so you can have your metaphor, I'll have my metaphor. But yes, I don't think any human beings on Earth have spent one tiny moment in all of history, all the tears that have ever rolled down the faces of mankind, or the zillions of tears of lament and horror. Not one tear has rolled down the cheek for the 
non-existent, totally exterminated Martians. Oh my god, there's no living Martians experiencing all this fun. <sighs> uh -huh. No, that's never happened here on Earth. And the reason why it's never happened is because the notion that this lack of drama on Mars is a horror is idiotic. On pleasure is only bad in so far as it produces actual pain. Non-existence is good from the point of view of potential people who would otherwise have suffered, but no, no it's good in terms of the fact that it eradicates all of the torture. All of it is eradicated, eliminated, prevented. It's the super coolest penicillin ever. You just take it and it, every single bad thing goes away. It's just so cool. Yeah. And what do you lose? The notion that we are doing something that could possibly be called good. Because we're not. We make a mess and we clean up half of it. That's the asymmetry, okay? Make a mess, clean up half of it, and call yourself a hero. It's like sticking the knife in the guy, and then you say, well, I'll do surgery and repair half of the damage. Well, gee, thanks. Not. Nobody laments the non-existence of all the people who could be here experiencing pleasure with us. The asymmetry between... Well, unless it's the guy who figures, well, I need more hot women to exploit and fuck. You know, there's probably somebody who's lamenting the fact that there aren't enough, whatever, uh, teen idols. Pain and pleasure, Benatar says, explains why we generally think it would be wrong to create someone if they're only going to suffer. But at the same time, we don't feel like we're obliged to create new people so that they can experience pleasure. That's because, Benatar says, from the point of view of non-existence, avoiding suffering is what matters. Ah, uh, kind of wordy there. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we do any of this thinking thing. So this whole implication that people who have kids think about any of this crap is sort of the fraud, right? So let's not pretend that people having children are responsible or decent in the sense that they don't even give it a fucking thought. They don't think about their kid dying. They don't think about that inevitable process, how will my child die? They don't do any of this shit. And let alone think about all the possible fucking bear traps that that kid is going to possibly fall into that are going to be quite horrible and all the things that they wouldn't want to happen to themselves even. They don't think about any of this crap. All they think about is how, well, I'm going to walk down the street and everybody's going to think how cool I am because I got a stinky, lousy, rotten, smelly kid tied to me. I don't know how that ever became cool. I guess it's just how propaganda works, right? If you got enough morons and they all do something really stupid, they'll make it all sound like, well, let's all wear Nazi symbols and let's incarcerate Jews and whip them. And somehow it gets all popular because everybody's doing it. But it's only because everybody's doing it, because everybody's a fucktard. Yeah, that would be the right philosophical answer. Uh, the fact that it was even vogue for morons to think it's real. Hey, look how cool I am. I got... Four kids to feed. Yeah, no, you're not cool at all. You're a loser. The upshot is that if you create someone, you are responsible for all the pain they suffer. And even if they live a great life, there will be some pain. And because of the asymmetry of pain... <laughs> yeah, even if they live a great life, again, and then let's just go find one of those in history. You know, even great people, even rich people, people of privilege, you know, Darwin's favorite child died, uh, you know, at seven years old or something. Um, uh, you know, uh, John Quincy Adams or whatever name it was. Anyway, I mean, horrible things, you know, uh, breast cancer, surgery with no anesthesia, all kinds of just horrible, disgusting things. And these are the privileged people. Eek. Would you really want to be Donald Trump? Would you really want to be a walking douchebag? No. no, no. Would you want your child to be a Donald Trump? and pleasure, it would be better for them to have never been born, even if they live an amazing life with only... Well, look, that's also proven by... Inst inst you can also look metaphorically at the future, but you can just look back at the past and just say all the people who have lived and died and experienced, and no one gives it a second thought. There's not even a marker anymore. They're just... 
It's like they never even existed. It was just so stupidly pitiful. And that's the truth. We're not Jedis. We're not in the movies. We're not having... This isn't... It isn't. And that. And for that reason alone, yes, spare the loser the the, <laughs> the pointless drama. Don't have kids. Bad idea. One second of pain it's still better for them never to have been created. Yeah, I don't see any point in doing this one second of pain thing because it's not something our brains can put into perspective because we live in a lot more than a second of pain and the addiction is so strong that we endure it. So that's like talking to a heroin addict and saying, oh, well, even if you had like a tiny little uh, a pimple on your arm, the heroin wouldn't be worth it. And they'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? I had my arm, my, my left arm amputated because of the heroin, and I still want the heroin. You know, I mean, you're, it's just kind of a, that that kind of talk about this stub toe bullshit is is everybody should just concede that yeah, come on, this is more of an addiction game than that, and so let's let's talk in some kind of perspective that's going to be able to mean something. So, yeah, start talking about the dying of cancer shit. That's the stuff to talk about. And whether you have a right to impose that on people. You could, you have the right to paralyze people for your pleasure. Because that's what it comes down to. That's what your Super Bowl does. Your, your Super Bowl is made out of paralyzed children. It's a fact. And if you can rationally tell me that your stupid fucking cunt sports entertainment is worth paralyzing children for, then I think you're a fucking sadistic lunatic. You're not a philosopher. You're a crazy fuck. They would have missed out on that pain, and since they wouldn't exist, they wouldn't care about missing out on the pleasure. Since you do happen to be alive, it may well be worth your while continuing your life, you know, now that you're committed, yeah, it's all this. <laughs> no, no, it's really, it's really serious. This whole idea of optimism bias. It's a, it's a serious psychiatric phenomenon, and you know there should be some discipline to recognize that that we continue our lives because we're desperate losers essentially, and we never feel completed. Okay, so we never get to do the Tom Cruise "You complete me" thing, baby. We, we just never get completed. It just doesn't happen that way. Life doesn't work that way. We're always incomplete. And we're always desperately trying to complete. And we complete for, well, I think I had it. I think I, I think I had it for, oh yeah, I had it for there. You know, three minutes, I was pretty complete. And then, damn it, I lost it. It slipped out of my fingers again. Fuck it. And then they have to go look for it again. But that's the, that's the fact of our existence. So if we're not going to have any kind of context to the fact that these people doing philosophy have to recognize that they're being corrupted by psychology, well, you're not really at the proper starting point. The proper starting point is, look, try really hard to be rational for a fucking change instead of thinking about what's in your personal interest and about your completion problems, okay? We have to be outside that. That has to be outside of the conversation. Because if you're going to keep putting your completion problems on top of everything, yeah, then you're going to keep making rationalizations and excuses to get what you want. And that's not philosophy. That's fucktardy. But David Benatar says the only life worth beginning is one that is completely free of pain, which for practical purposes is none of them. Well, it's, it's just, a, yeah, the idea of it would be is incomprehensibly stupid in terms of trying to draw that on a piece of paper, like how you make accomplishment out of without any, how you make thirst without any desert, how you make hunger, you know, you, you can't manufacture these things without creating the, the whip. The, the whip has to come first. So Benatar is an anti-natalist. Anti-natalism is the position that people should not have children, that it's a bad thing to do. Uh, the, and he would argue in his book, he does preface it by saying it would apply to animals also, but I don't know exactly why he wasn't more constructive in that way of implying that this is really about anti-natalist for all of the vaginas on the earth. There should be no more egg laying. <laughs> None of the eggs have anything good in them. 
You could be anti-natalist for all kinds of reasons, environmental reasons, maybe, but in Benatar's case, he's one because he believes that having children actually harms them. He calls it procreational Russian roulette with a fully loaded gun. Yes, and I call it something else, but it's yes, that's the idea. I call it lotteries or drawing straws, or you can make lots of metaphors for just how risky the game you're playing is because you don't have control of it. You don't have anything close to something called control. And playing with something that can cause torture and you don't have control over it. Not controlling something like torture is like not controlling nuclear waste. It's basically just about as irresponsible as you can get. And it makes you an asshole. He thinks that we actually have a moral duty not to have children. Which I think we actually have a moral duty to stop people from having children. So again, he just really doesn't go far enough. Um, accomplishing, <coughs> being, being a non-rapist is not good enough. You actually have to be against rape. And you actually have to vote for policies to prevent people from raping. Yeah. If you really want to be a human being means that nobody can have any reproductive rights. Remember the video I did on human rights a while ago? You can't have a moral right to do something that you have a moral duty not to do. You could... Uh, oh, I don't even know what that means. Moral duty. I mean, that's just the wrong kind of language. It's always ethics. Morality is something God's fart. It's not having anything to do with reason still adopt children who are currently alive, and Benatar doesn't think this necessarily means we need to have forced sterilization, but obviously, if this became a generally adopted viewpoint, society would change hugely. It might also have profound theological implications. If you're... Well, <clears throat> frankly, there should have been profound theological implications long ago. Look how small Adam's wiener is. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, holy shit. Fuck the, the whole Apple drama. The real drama is, I got no penis. Fuck. I'm Adam, I got no penis. For a believer, and Benatar is right, then if God created humanity, that was a serious moral crime on God. Oh, well look, what moral crimes on God's part is a joke. He, he fucking decided to punish the children of Eve forever for her sins. Pain in childbirth and the curse... Uh, you know, of her curse. Uh, forever! Fuck God, he's a retard. But if you're very clever, you might have spotted something odd about Benatar's argument. Feminist and applied ethical philosopher Christine Overall challenges the asymmetry of pain and pleasure. Oh, and I'm sure Benatar re-challenged her to grow up, bitch. I mean, I'm sure her argument is silly and vacuous and mushy and emotional. And just a piece of fucking steaming shit. And yet you had to mention it as if she accomplished something. And we know she didn't accomplish shit. We know she just talking shit. Little emotional rubbish and calling it philosophy. So way to go, philosophy tube. You know, it's like it's like a, the science channel doing the pseudo science. It's just, you know, you're insulting the subject. Well, your icon is sort of an insult too. It's like, what, what the fuck is that? It's like nursery school. Jesus, it's a flashcard or something. She asks, "Is it really good that no one is suffering from the point of view of potential people? Potential people." don't exist. They have no point of view. To be potentially existing is the same as not existing. Uh, <clears throat> look, but it's relevant, okay? If something is a potential consequence of something, you must account for it, okay? It itself doesn't have to be considered a thing until it does exist, but the fact that it may exist does have relevance. So, I mean, it's like saying, uh, again, nuclear power plants have the potential to melt down. That has to be understood when you're making one. So, I mean, the idea that people will exist in the future, it's a fact. Now, the fact that you can't hurt them now because they don't exist is also a fact. So, there's nothing I can do physically to the non-existent. But I can do things to the world that exists to make their lives miserable. That's a fact. But clearly, not allowing them to exist 
taking away their potential existence isn't harming them in any way, just like it wouldn't harm a nuclear power plant to be incapable of melting down. To make nuclear power plants incapable of melting down wouldn't be a bad thing. Taking away that potential can't be a bad thing. If avoiding suffering is good, it must be good from the point of view of people who already exist. So when Benatar says that non-existence... Well, well, again, the point of view of people who already exist, you have to include the people you are certain are probably going to exist also. So the ones that aren't just some vague notion of a possibility, the ones that you know are inevitably going to exist tomorrow because there's no mechanism to stop it, well, those people you also have to include. Their welfare is included. If we shit in their living room today, the shit's still going to be in their living room when they're born. So it's just silly to say, I can shit on them, and because they're only potential people, it's not going to land on their head. No, it's still landing on their head. It's good from the point of view of potential people who would otherwise have suffered. It's a cheat. There is no such point of view. Potential. Well, <clears throat> again, now you're just convoluting the argument because, yes, it would be entirely stupid to talk about the point of view of the person you dressed in a Superman costume for Halloween and then talk about, well, I dressed him in uh, Bozo the Clown or I dressed and go through the nine million permutations and say that somehow is a useful thing to be doing. It's not philosophically useful. What's to be understood is that there is a fundamental relationship between the present and the future and that um, if a future is going to be, um, you have to be you have to have accounted for it in the sense that you didn't do anything catastrophic to its interests now actual people don't exist to have a point of view if the question is are you worse off having been created then we need to ask worse off than what well again i wouldn't bother with such a silly question because it's just a subjective mush it's how do how do we know they have any capacity to understand whether they have won or lost. They are retarded by definition, frankly. <laughs> you know, humans aren't capable of answering subjective questions um, with any kind of reason. Words like better and worse are comparative. They require us to have two states that we can compare. But non-existence is not a state that anyone can be in. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. It is one with which you can compare to in the sense that you can understand that it has no negative component. There's no rational reason to think you're tormented in non-existence. No reasonable theory of torture. So you can know what the state is. And you can also understand that every night I go to sleep, I'm essentially disconnected from having a life. And clearly, <clears throat> a dreamless sleep. Um, clearly, I don't have any impression that uh, I'm harmed by that. So doing that for a million years wouldn't hurt. Doing that for 10 million years wouldn't hurt. See, I can just keep lengthening the, 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 how long I'm asleep until I get to infinity, and even that makes sense. In the scenario in which you were not born, it can't be the case that you would have been better off, because you wouldn't have been anything, never mind better off. That doesn't... <clears throat> well, again, it's silly, I think, not to uh, um, recognize that if you are, um, through the prevention of your existence, an individual isn't set on fire and burned to death, that is, in effect, a productive thing, that you did prevent a harm. And let's say you're somebody like, uh, whatever, Smallpox Mary or something. Um, you know, you're some kind of instrument of great doom in the universe. <laughs> you know, uh, it wouldn't hurt that you are prevented, uh, in the sense that something very constructive happens through that process of prevention. Uh, great diseases never manifest or something. So it's just not sensible not to recognize that not only <clears throat> can you assess the fact that you're not going to have to go through your personal dying process, but you could go through effects on society and benefits that are real in terms of the fact that you prevented a reality that would have been. And would have been is always an important um, juxtaposition. Mean, though that having children is definitely an okay thing to do. 
In fact, in her book, Why Have Children, overall argues that it's actually a very serious moral decision that we all need to be thinking more about. I really do recommend that book. We've talked about it once before on the channel when I did a video. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I really think it can't be that serious a book. Uh, this la la, um, some, somehow we're entitled to this selfish indulgence of playing this ego, racist, nepotistic, my kids are better than your kids thing, that there's some sort of, that some, there's some element of any positive psychology in this. And even the woman who feels some sort of biological clock need to take care of something, she's just being a slave to her frickin' emotional design. And um, it is a slavery. Uh, it's a going, stepping backward and saying, oh, this is all you're good for. You're a vagina, you, you fart out the babies, you take care of them and you die. Um, you're just reverting to such a lower form of life that how could anybody be enthusiastic about life existing at all if that's all it's going to be? Egg-laying, um, butt-licking, you know, uh, servants to a silly notion of accomplishment on father's rights and child support and I still get angry commenters under that one. Thinking philosophically about having children prompts us to remember just what a serious decision it is and how important all the rights and duties and responsibilities that come with it are. It also prompts us to think more... Well, this whole it prompts us thing, I, you know, I just, you know, I really hate that kind of crap because I don't think it does any of this shit for you fuckers. Again, I, just, I think you're so caught up in your own vogue egos that if it is to your personal interest in some way, if you can make five dollars on the deal, um, you'll take the chance with somebody else's welfare. You'll you'll put them in jeopardy for your five fucking bucks, because you're yeah you're ethical um, uh, monsters. Generally, about what a good human life is for everyone. At patreon.com slash philosophy tube, you can help me give away free education on YouTube. If that's something you could do, please do feel free to... Free education? Is that what that was? Holy shit. Check me a couple of bucks. I could really use it. And as always, please don't forget to subscribe. Well, I, I, I just can't subscribe to this blue color and this... Yuck. Yeah, I can't do any of that. She wants to keep the baby. Oh, fuck. <sighs> Some people, we should let them in the welfare office and never let them out again. <laughs> you know, it should be a trap door. Whoosh! <laughs> yeah. You're going to China, bitch. Uh, but see, you never really get to China because the gravity, you know, runs out. And you just keep going up and down, up and down, up and down. And then you finally settle in the middle of the earth. So I think that's a wonderful place to hide all the problems. Yeah, trap doors. we got to work on that one. We need to... You know, whole trapdoor, you know, kind of big dam project. You know, some sort of Rooseveltian trapdoor project. Uh, so anyway, what they call that thing when they made the bomb? Yeah, we need one of those projects for it. All right, I think I've done my job here once again. <laughs> yeah, I've I've had like a pretty good track record lately of getting the job done. I think I got the. I think I got the job done. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, till the next time and such. And I mean, look, antinomianism doesn't even touch the subject really. The, the game is life itself, and just look at what goes on in the natural world. It's just all slavery to a silly replicating molecule. It's gladiator war in the worst possible disgusting manner, eaten alive. It's gladiators, literally, eating each other alive. And you're sitting there in the stand saying, I want to watch more. I need more drama. I need more blood. If you're doing that, I mean, I can't, I just can't, if I could say, fuck you, and however loud I said it was just how much you deserve to hear it, it would be the loudest fuck you in the universe. I mean, it would be rattling every fucking galaxy. It would be, you know, spilling some of its suns. Because it's just such a fuck you subject. Uh, the living mechanism is disgusting in its very function. It just is. Ugh. 
motherfuckers. Consumption, reproduction, addiction, cannibalism. That's all you got. Crap.